Hey, it's Rob, and welcome to Axel's Garage. We're out here working on my 2003 Suburban. It's got a 5.3 in it, same as the 2000 to 2006 Suburban, Tahoe, Yukon, Yukon XL, Silverado pickup, you know the deal, these trucks here. So, the other day we were driving, my wife's been using it for the last couple weeks, we're driving, and of course when I get into it, knowing that my wife's been driving it for a couple weeks, check the fuel, because, you know, there's somebody in this house that likes to keep it just above empty. Anyway, I checked the fuel, the fuel was good, and we went for a ride, parked it, when we got back in it, no gauges. So, we knew where our fuel was, but we didn't have any other gauges. So, we drove it a little bit, and the gauges never came back up again. However, while we were driving it home, we did check to make sure everything else worked, and everything else in the truck worked, the windows, horn, radio, heat and AC, blow motor, anything electronic in the, in the vehicle worked, all the lights worked, everything worked. So we get home and I take the gauge cluster and I give that a look because I had had it out once before to fix the stepper motor on one of the gauges. Made sure the harness is plugged in in the back of the gauge cluster. It's a real easy in and out in these trucks. That was good. Checked all the fuses. They were good. Went to go start it and like give it like a little shimmy with the uh, ignition switch and to see if I could get the gauges to like do something during the start process. And that's when I noticed I couldn't even start it battery was completely dead or what I thought the battery was dead but there was no crank it was and that was it so came out to the truck put a meter on the battery and I'm like eight eight point two volts or something like that take the jump pack out jump it up start the truck up disconnect the negative of the battery truck dies alternator right most chances it's always gonna be an alternator you get the truck running you disconnect the battery that means the alternator is not putting out enough electrical to keep the truck running and you've been running off the battery for however long the alternator was shot and finally the battery gets so low the battery's dead and it won't start the truck easy backyard diy or diagnosis now remember in these vehicles there's also ground issues known for ground issues the rotted chassis grounds right they got those a bunch of different grounds along the chassis rails and over the years they do rot out so you gotta always think that that could be something and I visually checked all the grounds they all look good nothing looked corroded um, I'm pretty luck wood lucky with this one on the grounds so now we look it's looking like it's it's the alternator um, but the funny thing is I had never I never had an alternator go bad or a battery go bad and all I lost was the gauges. So that was pretty unique. And this has happened to me a couple times in the last few weeks. And we're doing another video on another thing that went bad. And I, I didn't think that that was it. I, I would have bet an arm that it wasn't going to be an, an alternator because the gauges went dead. And that was the only thing was the gauges. So anyway, we look up the alternator for this truck. And I'll go grab it and I'll show you what we found. So we go to look up the alternator. And it turns out there's three different alternators. Now, if you go on some of the big box auto parts stores websites to pick out your alternator they just list a 105 amp and 145 amp but don't tell you why or how or if you should have one of those which ones problem with these GM ones they should list them by RPO codes and those are the production codes of all the stuff that goes into the vehicle and you'll find a decal in the glove compartment if it's your original glove compartment there's a decal in there that's gonna have the VIN number of the vehicle so if you bought it used, make sure that decal matches the VIN number of your vehicle. And it's going to have a bunch of codes. They're going to be like three-digit codes. Some of them are all numbers. Usually it's a letter and two numbers. It could be uh, two letters and a number. Just a bunch of different three-digit codes. And what that is, that's the, when they built the vehicle at the factory, that's how they know what to put in each vehicle based on those codes. So... There's a choice of three. You could have 105 amp in this. You could have 145 in the amp in this, and then you could have some kind of 145 amp special duty alternator. But the, unless you look at those RPO o codes and can decipher them, there's no real easy way to figure them out. But on these particular trucks, a K68 would be the 105 amp alternator, the least expensive. A KG3 would be the 145 amp alternator, in the middle expensive. And then an 8C6 would be that special 145 amp alternator, the most expensive. I figured for sure it was going to be the most expensive. I go in there, eh, I got the middle of the road, 145 amp KG3. Um, and I wound up getting it on Amazon. 
I got an AC Delco, okay, with a part number of 334-2529A, and I'll put a link to this alternator in the description below. It is a remanufactured alternator. It goes for about 100 bucks. Bought it on Amazon, no core charge. All right, a new one, they're going to run about 225 for a brand new one. So we went with the reman Amazon. If for some reason it doesn't work, we could send it back easily enough. If it's the wrong one, again, we could send it back easily enough. Um, we do have enough vehicles around where we could lay this one up for a few days. And it's been laid up for a few days. So knowing that I was going to try to get this done today, I put a, a slow charger on the Suburban. And it's been going about 24 hours or so. It's just a basic 6 volt or 12 volt one amp slow charger um, and hopefully once I pull this off which I'm going to do now hopefully our battery is in better shape all right we got bad news 8.53 volts now I've had this slow charger on this battery for let's see how long have I had it on this battery I've had it on this battery for about 24 hours 20 26 hours now um, and it's 8.51 volts now so this battery could be toast as well we might have uh, it's an older battery it's not crazy old but it's probably around four or five years old and we might have done this battery in with the alternator going and the battery going so low and us having to jump it a couple times to get it parked over here we can work on it I was hoping having the charger on it for you know 26 hours or so would have brought it back up to uh, to where it should be so there's a good chance we're putting a battery in this truck too let's go with the alternator for now though i'm going to put that charger back on and let's see uh let's see if the charger is actually doing something we know the charger is working battery ain't taking a charge that really sucks so it looks like we're going to be putting a battery in this i'll leave the charger on the battery I don't know, maybe it didn't have a good connection. I doubt it though, I think the battery shot. All right, so I was talking to myself for a little while because I was pissed that it looks like I have a, a shit battery, but um, I reconnected the, I forgot to hit record, that's why I was talking to myself. So I reconnected the charger, figuring let's leave it charging while I'm changing the alternator anyway and see what happens. And sure as shit, when I connected the charger this time, it like really sparked well, so I'm wondering if I didn't have the alligator clamps, maybe I pinched the rubber instead of getting it on the side terminal nub there, um, because it looks like it's charging and the voltage is going up relatively fast with the charger in, so I think it was uh, operator error, meaning me, not having the charger on all the way and letting it sit for 26 hours with the charger not actually charging the battery. So now we'll take a look at the alternator, hopefully the one in the box is the same as the one on the car. wire harness is up there this is going to sit like this so it's clocked correctly I got a, a bolt on the bottom here a bolt over here my uh, my harness plug is there and my alternator wire uh, the battery wire is is right up here so it's clocked correctly and what they say by being clocked correctly is you look at your mounting holes and you see where they would go and then you look at your connections and see where they are to make sure that they're in the right spot oriented to the front part of the alternator because you see how there's these bolts going through this actually can be put to a different position you could move this back part to here and then the connections would be in a different spot and that's when they talk about it being clocked correctly that's what you look for. so this one's definitely clocked correctly feels good looks good let me get some tools and we'll get this in all right, so the first thing we're going to do, 516, so I'm sure there's an M size for this, but 516 fits. Just take the engine cover off so you can access your, your wire plug for the alternator. All right, let's stick that out of the way. This way we can get at the wire plug. And then I'm just going to take this off here so that we can get to our tensioner for the for the belt so we can loosen the belt up and get the belt off so
And I, I think just turning it out of the way like that will do because now you can get down towards the um, belt tensioner, which all you got to do is be able to get a socket on that belt tensioner. All right, so down on the passenger side of the motor, the top pulley is going to be a belt tensioner right over here. Let's see where my where my fingers are uh, going. It's a 15 millimeter bolt that's not going to come off, but you're going to go in a tight motion, which is going to bring the belt tensioner um, towards the middle of the motor, which is going to take tension off of the belt, and you'll be able to slip the belt right off of the alternator and just let it hang right there below. Okay, so with the belt off, now you can start to take the alternator off. So now you got your wire harness behind, and I'm sure there's a locking tab, which there is, in the back. Get a finger behind it and pull up and you see you got the, your weather tight uh, o-ring gasket on it and there's your little locking tab that we were peeling up move that to the side and then you got a 10 millimeter nut holding your wire on um, this is live to the battery alright so your battery should be disconnected when you do this we did not disconnect the battery Loosen it up. I didn't loosen, I didn't disconnect the battery because I'm just annoyed at the battery. So you pull this off, put it somewhere where it's not going to touch ground. You really should disconnect the battery though. And then now all you got left are your two mounting bolts, which are 15 millimeter on the bottom. Now, I have not had this alternator off in my ownership of this car, which is most of its life. I bought it about three years old, so I'm assuming this is the original alternator. All right, there's the bolt. Not really too much corrosion on it. Same thing, not too bad corrosion wise. And now this alternator should lift right out. Might need a little help with a pry bar or something um, to get it all the way out. All right, if you look down right here where the bolts go through, there's these little steel sleeves and they sort of tighten into the alternator and that's what makes the alternator a little bit of a, a burden to get out. So you gotta kind of pop it out You can see once you get it going, it comes out, and that's where these sleeves are here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to take these sleeves, and we're going to tap them in. And when you tighten in the, the bolts, when you put the new one in, these sleeves will come back in. And that just helps um, take up any gap that there is there. But when these have been in here for a while, nothing crazy. You just got to give it a little prying. And it'll come up all the way. There you go. And then the alternator is out. All right, so these are the sleeves that I was talking about, and you could pretty much, you know, just put your pry bar up against them, and a little hammer on the back of a, a wrench. And just tap them in. All right, and just to help it slide in, what I'll do is I'll take a little white grease and just put it on those metal sleeves because they get pretty corroded up. So now you take the new alternator. Should be able to wiggle it down in between those sleeves there. Get 
Okay, and it hasn't. I think we're actually down a little too far, so I'm going to stick the pry bar under it. I am fighting this thing like I shouldn't be fighting it. I'm trying to get this back bolt in, which makes me think something may be awry. So I'm going to tilt it up, and I'm going to make sure the bolt even fits through. And it doesn't. bringing in close to show you what I found this bolt is not going through and if you look right here the case itself the hole is a little out of round if you can pick that up I don't know how well the camera is picking that up but that's reman so let me see if I could tap it in gently otherwise we're gonna have to run a drill bit through this now Way too tight. And what did I do? What did I tell you? Be careful not to do what I do. So, I'm going to pry this back out. to drill that out all right so what I did not to lose the center right. back you up a little here so what I did not to lose the center because it was just tagged in only on this side not on the back side I drilled through the back with a drill bit that was snug in the hole and hopefully the nut will fit through now and it's still a little bindy so I am going to run the next size drill bit through just to be sure this other one is completely fine so we're going to go just one more size and just make sure that that bolt goes through with no problem all right, so when I ran in with the next size drill, but I noticed I had like a constriction right in the middle here. So the casing must have been a little, little screwy, but now at least we got it in the right spot. We should be able to drop this guy in and get this alternated job that's taking way too long done. Now we're both lined up. I'm gonna put a little white grease on the bolts and on the shanks. These weren't corroded, but they do tend to corrode. So you got the steel bolt going through the aluminum bracket with the steel sleeve, and then the aluminum water, uh, water pump alternator. So I think it's good practice to put a little lube on it, make it easier for the next guy, because the next guy might just be you. So I just throw a little bit of white grease on the bolt and the shank. Don't need too much, just a little bit. And then come in and with a thumb on the back of it, try to just get them started. You know you started, then you can come over here, and do the same thing, get a little wiggle going in. And give it a tighten. So don't put the 15 millimeter away just yet because you're going to need it one more time for the belt now while we're in here with the 15 millimeter we could go do the belt so now it's pretty much going to be the same thing we're going to grab it and we're going to go in a, in a tightening motion 
And we're gonna pull the belt up. Make sure it's on the pulleys that are below it. Because that would definitely stop you from getting it on there. And then you're gonna slip it over the alternator. It looks good. You could put that 15 millimeter away. You could take your 10 millimeter nut, new one comes with the alternator, put it on the back terminal. Snug it down, and then you could slide your boot back over, and you're done with your 10 millimeter. Now you can take your harness, make sure your weather tight gasket didn't fall off, and plug it in. All right, now all that's left is to put the airbox back on. And get this clamp around your upper hose as well. So we're gonna slide this back. I'm gonna pop the upper hose into its bracket. Snap it in place. And then we can Slide this down and jiggle it on. Take your engine cover, pop it black down, still with your 5 16 Give that a snug, and you're done with that, and you're done with all your tools. So to be 100% honest, which I like to be honest when I'm doing these things, because things don't always work out as you had them planned. In the beginning of the video, I, I put that battery charger on. I put it on yesterday, and it should have been charged by now. But then when I took it off, and I checked with a meter, I had like eight and change volts in the battery. And then when I put the battery charger back on, it sparked real good when I was putting it onto the negative. Uh, I put the negative on, and when I put the positive on, it sparked real good when I touched it to the terminal. And I watched the meter climb, and it was climbing. It was 10.4, 10.45. It, it was climbing as I started to do the job. But sometime during the course of the job, it started falling because by the time I got everything done, you know, and we drilled out that stupid thing that I couldn't get, you know, the bolt through and everything. By the time I got all that done, I look back at it. It's down in the low eights again. And the battery's completely dead. So I don't know if it's the battery charger that's bad. That's an old charger. I don't know if that's bad or the battery's bad. Like we said, we, I, I think I put this battery in when my oldest daughter went, was a freshman in college, and she took this to college. And that's 20, the fall of 2015. I don't know. But we're going to put the jump pack on it, see if we can get it started, and see if the alternator... I don't like, you know, overworking the alternator like that to, to charge the battery up from 8-something, but... I really don't have an option at this point. I think my battery charger, I think it's time I gotta buy a new battery charger. Let's see what happens. battery is going to take a charge or we're going to get two batteries this week because we do have another vehicle with batteries.
I'm at a steady 1430. The belt looks good, all of it is not making any funny noises. Gauge in the vehicle is good, everything is as it's supposed to be. I'm just gonna let it idle for a little while and see what happens. Now, I thought this was a, a, a good video because, I mean, replacing an alternator is a very simple do-it-yourself thing. Diagnosing an alternator is usually, usually for the do-it-yourself, are pretty straightforward. Your battery's going dead on you and you disconnect, the, you start the car up and disconnect the battery and then the car dies immediately. It means the is not putting out enough, enough juice to sustain the engine running without drawing from the battery. How do you double check yourself? with a meter on the alternator while the car's running, see what kind of output the alternator's putting out, one was putting out in the low eights. Right, should be in the 14s at idle. Now, when everything is operating normally, and I did have, and my wife had a 2003 Yukon XL, exact twin to this, only a GMC. Her alternator went bad when we were on a trip. We were on the highway, and I saw the gauge start to go down, the bolt gauge on the dash, and I got a warning in the driver information display saying vehicle not charging or something to that effect. A not charging verbal, you know, display on the uh, driver information center. And that's how I knew it wasn't charging. And I had a pretty good hunch it was the alternator not charging. And we got off the highway and hit the nearest auto parts store. Luckily, we made it there with enough juice left in the battery to do this repair in some, you know, auto zone or advanced auto parking lot, um, borrowing their tools that didn't all fit. Um, luckily, we didn't have to drill out the alternator, but we were there. So if the bolt didn't go through the alternator, I could have just went to the store and, and swapped another one. Do we even know if we put the right alternator on it? I have no idea because it fit in. Everything, you know, the, the plugs were the same. The clock position was the same, but we never did check those RPO codes. So I don't know if I had the right one. I will link in the description below the three different RPO codes for these vehicles and a link to each alternator for these vehicles. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully we don't need a new battery because I need one in the food truck. So that's one battery this week. I really don't want to buy two this week. But I don't know. Let me know. Comments, concerns, questions down below. Well, you didn't think I'd leave you hanging, right? I couldn't. I couldn't just end the video like that. So we let it run for about two hours to charge the battery up just sitting here idling when i ate, ate dinner and did crap like that and hopefully that charged the battery up enough and now it's sat for two days so it's been 48 hours battery's been sitting and now we're going to check and see what the battery voltage is because i'm i'm confused i was it the charger is the battery shot as well we knew the alternator was bad but is the battery shot it could be because i'm guessing it's around the six year old point so let's check and see what the battery voltage is after two days and the only charging that we gave it was when we put the alternator in and we ran it for the um, for the two hours or so that we ran it. So here at the battery. Oh, bouncing around here. Make sure we got good contact. There we go. 12.28. That's like 50 or 60 percent. I think that's about 60%. Let me see if I can find a chart for you and we'll throw it in right here. Okay, you see it on the chart. You see what our battery voltage is. So was it that idling it for the two hours really didn't charge the battery up? Is the battery shot? I don't know. We got a good alternator in there. So now we have to figure out what the deal is with this battery. So I got a different charger. This one is a 1.5 amp charger with a float. So we're gonna put this one on and and this one actually has an indicator that tells us when the charge cycle is complete. So we'll come back to it in the morning. We'll look and see if the charge cycle is complete and then in if it's complete and we got a green light on and it went through the charge cycle, we could take a voltage reading and we could see whether this battery is, is suffering or not. And if it is, we'll get another battery and we'll see how we make out. All right, so it's been about 20 hours since we put this charger on and it's gone through the charging cycle 
indicating that um, it reached uh, fully charged, whatever that's going to be for the battery, but it went through its charging cycle. It's giving me a green indicator light, so I know it did its job. And I still got the charger hooked up. We're going to check our voltage. And... Voltage at 12.2. So 12.2 with the charger still connected. Let me take the charger off. And let's give it a look. And now it's 12.18. So looking at the chart on battery condition, and I'll throw it up here. We know this battery's uh, tanked. So it's a six-year-old battery. It's only supposed to last five years. It's got a five-year warranty. You know, you're lucky when they even last five years. It's an interstate, so it's a decent battery. It was probably on its way out. You know, the battery was probably knocking on death's door. And because the alternator went, let this battery go down to just over eight volts. It, it did it in early. It probably was, wasn't going to make it, you know, through the summer. Um, but that alternator just, you know, completely killed it. So we'll go over to Costco, get a new battery at Costco, because they have the best deals on interstate batteries. And uh, watch Project's, Project Farm's video on batteries if you really want to know the differences in the batteries, cost as far as how they perform, and then the, the few companies that actually make all the batteries. Uh, he's got a pretty interesting video there. That's why we're going to Costco, getting a Costco battery, and we'll be good to go. We do have a few other repairs on the Suburban um, on the list, and we'll take you along with them when we make them. As always, thanks for watching.